So I did this before. And so now I've got I've got a bowl here. You know, I can still use this. Nothing wrong with this. It's, and it, this is this was done yesterday. It's still in temper. I mean, it's it's good temper. But I can't just heat this up and use it. I got to retemper every time. You got to retemper. So these are called calettes or drops, right? Now, there's a reason why we love using this. Portion-wise, if you use a block, a 10-pound block, you've got to break that sucker up. You never get uniform pieces. It's hard to melt down. Some of it melts, some of it doesn't. And you got this left over. What do I do with it? This stuff melts evenly. And when we get over here and start making our, our truffle, you're going to see how beautifully this works versus a block, too. It's also very efficient, the factor to make this stuff. You can make it a lot faster than making it into 10-pound blocks because when these drops come out, they're in temper. So they cool real quick. We just dump them right into, into bags and sell them. So you'll see them in various different sizes. Do not be confused because they look like chocolate chips, that they are chocolate chips or baking. They are not. Right? They are. Meanwhile, I'm going to warm this up in the microwave. No double boiler. That's a no-no. No water. Why no water? Condensation gets water. Condensation. Winner. All right. Microwave. I'm going one minute. This should take two and a half minutes. I'm going to do a minute. I'm going to do a minute. And I'm, and I'm going to do maybe not even two and a half because the last time I did two and a half, it went to 120 degrees. It took me longer to cool it down. So I think in this microwave, two pounds, it's like two minutes and 15 seconds. But I don't want to put it all on two minutes and 15 seconds. I'm going to do it in intervals, on high. Some people like to go to medium to be a little more careful. It just takes you a little bit longer. And you shouldn't walk away from it because if you do, you mess it up. I know. I I'm very famous at burning stuff. I don't so am I. It smells really bad. So we'll let this uh, we'll let this go to full minute. We're gonna stir it up. This way. Move some of this stuff out of our way here so we can see a little bit better. Now that's a typical Belgium chocolate. Belgium dark chocolate. Very smooth in your mouth. Melts nicely. That's the reason why they put Belgium on these things. Now, microwaves. Yes. How could you tell that that was in good temper? You know the one you did yesterday? The one I did yesterday? Yeah, you said it's in good temper. What, what does that mean? Actually? That means that it's, that it has good color. It's hard, right? So I know it's in good temper, right? It, otherwise, it would be real streaky. There's a little bit of streaks because I kind of poured it, but it would be streaky because the, the cocoa butter would separate. So I know that it was in good temper. I did a milk chocolate one. This one, uh, it's still okay. I chunked some stuff out of it, so it doesn't look as nice as that other one. Microwaves, cook from the inside out. This one is pretty centered, that's good. Sometimes you get hot spots on the some of them work on the sides, you gotta be careful. Mix it up a little bit. Because if you don't, that hot spot is gonna be really hot and that, that you might burn it right there. Isn't it true that chocolate keeps its shape even when it's hot? Pardon me? Chocolate, you need to mix it a little bit to get to see how melted it is. Yeah, yes, and see how it melted it is. It does keep its shape. Yes. And it, it, now this this one it should go pretty fast. This one's gonna be pretty much. I may stop it too. We'll we'll check the temperature. I, this is why I love this thing. And another reason why I love this thing, if I'm using this baby, I'm constantly cleaning the tip off. I'm always cleaning. Oh, you know. Now it's nice to have you in your pocket. If you're in a big shop and you have one in your pocket, it's fine. But I, I've seen guys in big factories walking around with these things, checking all kinds of. Things. Let's see how this works. And I'm, we're going to be doing a shortcut to temper. And as soon as this comes out, I'm going to tell you what this is. Yeah. Get that 
Chocolate loves motion. The crystals love to be moved around. That's why this thing is moving all the time. Let's check the temperature. See, it's 100. Not enough yet. It'll actually be a little cooler than that as these ones that did not completely melt will cool it down. So I'm going to say... Try 15 seconds to see if that works. Probably should have hit it 115 the last time instead of one. High works pretty fast, and this, when you get up in this temperature, it shoots up fast. Genius 108.5. Mark this day down. <laughs> Yesterday was 120. Oh. Not a problem. It would be warmer. You get over 150, then you you know you start messing messing the crystals up. They don't like it. Now, you notice this is extremely thin, right? This is a molding chocolate, so it flows very freely. Not real good to make clusters with, but fabulous for molding. Very, very nice for molding. A lot of cocoa butter. More cocoa butter, more viscous. Okay, now I want to cool this down, right? So I want to start the process. So I can stand here and I can do this, but I'm going to speed up the process a little bit by adding some... Tempered chocolate. Must be tempered, otherwise you mess this up. This is going to drop the temperature. I'm looking to get this temperature, this is dark, to about 91 degrees. Now if I'm working with chunks, I had to bust the block up, now I gotta throw random chunks of block in there, or I've got to shave the block with a knife and get myself a few ounces to throw in there so that it melts properly. Tempered, always tempered chocolate. So you have to get it over 100 degrees and then you have to bring it down? And you have to bring it down. All right, we're down to 100, 101. So not everything we buy is tempered chocolate? Yes. It is? It is. Oh, it is. Yeah. Otherwise, you could not get it out of the mold that it was molding in or deposit it the way it was deposited. Now, there is one thing that you, that, that you can buy that is not, and that would be cocoa butter. Except for this. This is called Recreo. This is freeze-dried cocoa butter in temper. So with that, it is the same as what I just put in there. Here's the, here's the secret though. In order to temper the chocolate, we're only looking for 1% of the beta-5 crystal to bring it into temper. All, it, since it's a complex fat, it has many different parts to it. But that beta-5 one we call it, the beta crystal, that's the one <coughs> that uh, brings the temper in. This is beta-5. This is there. So, that 1% locked in here, I gotta add a lot of this to get the proper 1% to cool this down. I can do this. Eight. Put a couple more of these in here just to get it down. That should do it. I only put maybe four ounces in there into the two pounds to, to drop this temperature. likes this agitation. I'm 
I'm doing here what the machine does. Right, the machine took it up to 108. The machine starts bringing it back down. And the machine says, where do you want the temper temperature at? I plugged in 88.5. When it gets down to 88.5, the thing beeps and says, you're in temper. If there's any seed left in the back of this thing, it says, take it out. Because I don't want to overseed it. And we'll talk about that in a little bit later. Because there is a such thing as overseeding. 86. So you, you bring it up to like over 100 degrees. 108. Just 108 right. to get it all melted? Is that get it all melted. You get reason? all the crystals melted properly. Okay. There are a bunch of crystals in here that melt at different, temp different temperatures. It's, it's a complex fat versus Crisco, the simple fat. Okay. Melt it, cools, gets hard, it's cool, it's hot, cold, no problem. Here you can't do that, you'll have a mess. You won't, as a matter of fact, that mold that passed around, there's other two pieces, probably were not going to come out unless I beat the crap out of them or just run them under hot water and get them out because they did not shrink properly. Okay. I have a question. Yes. What's the, what's the difference between the cocoa butter versus the machine and we're adding more chocolate and so no difference no, no difference nope this is good for batches 10 pounds or less like this is a two pounds right i'm only going to put one percent in here one percent of this is going to be just a couple of a couple of tablespoons level tablespoons i sprinkle it in mix it in i'm in temper boom just like that does that I don't have anything have else besides um, butter fat in there? Is there 100% cocoa butter has oh, been okay. freeze dried. In temper, not out of temper. Most cocoa butter that, that, that you buy looks like lard. <coughs> you know, to, to scoop it out, it's all kind of hard and, because it's not in temper. It's, it's too expensive to put cocoa butter, generally put cocoa butter in temper and sell it. So they just they just nozzle it out into a pail, and there you got it. You know, and then you have to you have to deal with it. You have to temper with it. Most people use the cocoa butter to thin out chocolate, and or in other food or even cosmetic applications. I think we're getting close here. Ninety four. I don't want to put any more. I don't want to put any more of this in there. This is good. I just want to let this come. Down. So you wouldn't put that in your machine, that's only for right? I could put this in the machine. What would be the effect of that? This machine holds 10 pounds. If I want to run this all day and I want to use 20 pounds worth of chocolate, I can do that without stopping the machine. I want to put in the back of this machine around 90 degree chocolate, 20% of what's in there. I don't want to put too much. That'll then come around, it'll grab the, the, the crystals that are in this side, the seed, they'll grab that seed and they'll say, oh, I like this, and the volume of this goes up. So you just keep adding to this all day long. Otherwise, I gotta stop it and start the whole process over again. It takes about 20 minutes. Yeah, because that machine is very short. Even on the extended temper, the chocolate's overworked after a So would that make it longer? I mean, would it give you longer? If this chocolate, if this chocolate in here becomes overseeded, which means it's made too many crystals. Remember I said it likes to be at a certain spot where there's just a little gap between them? But it, all, but it keeps going because it loves that friction. That friction makes it move around, and as these seeds are moving around, they're grabbing onto each other, closing the gap, making it thicker. Still in temper, but makes it thicker. So if I add warm chocolate in the back, not even temper, just warm chocolate with floating crystals in there to the back of this, 20%, when it gets into this side, all those ones that are real tight say, oh, I got a place to go. They spread out. That thins right back down again. You can feel it. You'll be able to feel that on the end of your spatula. When it starts getting thick, you know that, that this is overseeded. Right? <laughs> now, once you take it out of the heat, the seeding process stops. Now you're into the cooling process. See the difference? So are you going to say 20% of what's already used in there that's left? Am I for this? Yeah, no, you're adding 20% to the machine. I, I could do that. I could stop now and just kind of feed that in. 
you know, except this is dark and that's milk, but yeah, I could do that. I could do that. <laughs> so a lot of the candy makers, as they go along and they're using machines, they have a, a lot of them have melting tanks, holding tanks at 90 degrees, and they're going over and they're, 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 they're taking off a bucket of this and they're dumping it in their machine. And half an hour later, they come back, the machine's down, they go and dump a little bit more in. Some of the more progressive guys will have metered pumps that will just, just shoot it in there a little bit at a time all day long. That level never changes all day long. And the bigger machines, they, they temper the chocolate uh, constantly. They're crystallization machines. They're different. They break down the chocolate right in the machine, recrystallize it, pump it back out again in seconds. Mm. Amazing. Because they have refrigeration in it and they have heaters in it that do that. So they're mingling the chocolates together and they're, they're constantly recrystallizing. They'll never oversee. That's your $18,000 machine. They start at about $18,000. But that will never oversee. <coughs> okay, we're down to 92. I have. Um, I have a pamphlet. Uh, fortunately, I ordered some. I only got one. I only have one that I brought. <coughs> but if you want one of these things, we can we can send you one, or I can get the uh, the PDF for it and send it to you. It's a, it's about five different ways to temper chocolate. All right. And the one that I'm doing here, I'm going to show you. Freeze dried cocoa butter. Now I know how much to put in because I've done it. But if I did it by weight. I don't want any lumps. If, if it's if it's lumpy, lumpy. I, I run through a sieve. I sprinkle that in. We do another one. I mix that in here. If I put this in too soon, what do you think would happen? Nothing. All I did was add more cocoa butter because I broke the beta 5 crystal. It has to go in between 91 and 94. Too high, it just breaks it, and you're just thinning this out. Too low, it won't melt. You go below 90, it doesn't melt. It's 90 degrees. It went from 90, it was actually, it was a little warm. It was 90, a little over, around 92, and I know it worked with 92. Just that little tiny bit dropped that two degrees that fast. And it's not cold, it's not, it's just that it's a chemical reaction to the cocoa butter. That's all blended in beautifully. You can't tell by looking at it whether it's in temper. Because it flows exactly the same as it flows when it was 108. So we do a test. You can do it on paper. I usually use the spatula. I take the spatula, I dip it in. I set it down and I wait. I wait to see if it comes in temper. Should be. I can put the fan on, a little air on it, loves air, and we'll just see what that looks like in about five minutes. All right, we're gonna go on to something else. This stuff is good for years. The only difference is, if I'm going to temper with this thing, in about six months from now, I need to put it in at about 94, 95 degrees versus 92 to 94 degrees. Because there's another crystal in this thing that still works. This one's different. You ever go to the store and you buy a candy bar, like a Hershey bar, and that's, man, what a great snap. I gotta break this thing. It's like, man, it's hard to break, right? That's because the beta-6 crystal is the crystal that continues to harden the chocolate. So over time, the chocolate gets harder and harder and harder. Great snap, especially if it's in really good temper, right? Which you know the Hershey does in great temper because they don't want to return, so everything is good. So it keeps getting harder and harder. So you put that thing in your mouth and it doesn't melt. What's wrong with this thing? Well, that crystal melts at a few degrees higher than the beta five. So you've got to be, your mouth's got to be warmer. And everybody says they put in what? 
It's the old wives' tale that you put in chocolate. Paraffin. I was here yesterday, and believe it or not, this woman is buying chocolate chips, and she's putting paraffin. She thinks it's paraffin wax. It's not. What she's putting in there is called Paramount crystals. That is nothing more than freeze-dried or tempered uh, palm oil. Palm oil which is compatible, but not exactly the same, to, to cocoa butter. And she thinks that she's doing this to thin out the chocolate. I said, you should be co putting cocoa butter in that. It's real chocolate, not that stuff. You know? Well, I gotta put it in because I'm making, I, I'm trying to coat it, it's too thick. Well, you're just ruining your chocolate by putting palm in. You might as well just use the, the, the compound coating. Now, so, in a bean, it takes 400 beans to make one pound of chocolate. 400. That's a lot of beans. So, in the bean itself, there's about, on average, about 24% cocoa butter. The rest of it's a solid pulp that you're eating, right? You cannot make a candy bar out of 24% or less cocoa butter. It will not stick together. There's not enough cocoa butter. So, up till 1842, the only thing you can do with this is to make a drink out of it. <coughs> Now you make a paste out of it, and that's how they made the drink. They would, make, they would grind it up into a paste, friction creates heat, melts the bean into a paste. They would mix it with hot water and spices, not milk, like we do, hot water and spices. When, when the beans came from North America, when Columbus and all the explorers found these beans, the Incas were using them for money. Very valuable crop. Grew wild. The tree, the tree will last 200 years but the fruit only lasts on there for 25 years. Then it's just the tree. So after 25 years, guess what we do? Gone. Meanwhile, we're planting new ones all the time because it takes five years to get the beans, the pods to get the beans out of. 20 degrees north and south of the equator. The original two trees came from Central and South America. There's only two. Two varieties, that's it. The third variety is a combination of the two, right? So you have the uh, Central American bean, Caribbean. If you go to if you go to the Caribbean, if you go to uh, Dominican Republic, it's pretty, they're pretty big growers now. They make a really nice nice tree, nice bean. Central America, Venezuela, Colombia, but most of the beans now come from Western Africa, because about 40 years ago, Brazil was the top grower, but the government got greedy. They started taxing the farmer, and the farmer said, yeah, we'll go back to coffee. Mm -hmm. A blight came and killed all the trees. We said we can't have this. We knew it was coming. So we, we found more farmers in Ivory Coast, Ghana, uh, and Cameroon are the primary users, and that's over probably close to 80% of all the beans. There's beans in Malaysia now, Vietnam, Java, um, Hawaii. There's a, there's a resurgence in Hawaii because again, 20 degrees north and south of the equator. So there's a there's a farm there's a, several farms in Hawaii that grow their own beans, produce the product right there on the island itself. Um, so anyway, so that you're tasting the bean itself, right? Now a lot of people like that because that's where all the nutrients are. They're in that product. So uh, if you eat that, you're getting all the nutrients. The problem today in processing is. The heat, it's very heat intense to produce chocolate, kills a lot of the good nutrients. So we're losing about 80% of the nutrients through processing. So you've only got one stage of processing there, which is the first heat stage to, uh, to crack the bean and to kill the bacteria. That bean then gets ground up into a powdery form. It's, and then you add your sugar, you add your milk for milk chocolate, you add a little bit of vanilla, for flavor and some maybe some other spices in there that are secret uh, flavors and products, and that is a lot a big heat process. The longer you can, the longer you can keep that heat, or the lower you can keep that heat, the more nutrients you keep. But guess what we do? Let's rush it through. Let's get it done. Still maintain the flavor and everything. We're just killing the nutrients. So, not not. Uh, the so would the cocoa have? The cocoa would have more nutrients than the That nib you chocolate. just ate. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Well, yeah, that. I mean, yeah, that I know. But what about if you just get the cocoa powder? No. Would that have, you know, it be the same as like You have to press it at, at, at a couple hundred degrees. It gets pressed to squeeze yeah. that butter out. Now, this is still workable. There's nothing wrong with this. Temperature has gone down, but I can keep working with this. It's, it's 85. I'm still fine. If I'm working with the alternative product, which we call compound coatings, no cocoa butter in that, or minimal cocoa butter. There's about 10 to 12 percent cocoa butter in the compound coatings. Because remember, in compound coatings, you make it with cocoa powder. It don't taste all that great. It's powder. Only 10 percent cocoa butter in it. Then you add palm oil. You don't have to temper that. But that, but that sets up very fast. So it won't, I mean, it, it's not a product that's going to kill you. It just doesn't taste all that great to me. I like working with a real chopper. Here's the difference, working with it. It has a high uh, melt point. So when you work with compound coatings, the ones you just throw in the microwave and you heat it up to 100 degrees and go to it, 105, 110, if it drops below 95 degrees, it's very sticky, very hard to work with because it sets up at 95 degrees. This sets up, look, this sets up really, doesn't start really setting up until it gets below 80 before it really sets up. So you've got a lot of time to work with this. You don't have a lot of time to work with that coating. Yeah. Now you notice around the edge, it's starting to get hard around the edge, because I didn't stir this. I don't want to stir that in now, if I'm working with Just leave that crust there and just keep going. Why also, do they make the coating chocolate? Then? Pardon me? Why do they make the coating chocolate? It was supposed to be, what really happened, remember when I said Brazil, mm -hmm. they were making 40 some percent of the, the, the right. trees and then they all got diseased and mm -hmm. we were in trouble. We needed more cocoa butter to produce more chocolate. So they came up with the palm oils to substitute cocoa butter in the industry. And all of a sudden they said, well, what? we can sell this to the consumer too. So now they started packaging and selling it to the consumer. When it first started, it was only in 10 pound blocks for the industry. And they thought it was going to be the savior. Oh, this is going to save us a lot of money. It's cheaper, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't taste that good. Plus it works differently. It sets up different. It works different. It's yeah, just not the same. Coating chocolate doesn't taste good. Yeah. Use it a very sweet. <coughs> has a very distinct flavor profile to it from because of the palm oil and the you know just again just a little bit of cocoa butter that's the difference that's what happened that's okay. how we that's how it started okay. we didn't have that problem it wouldn't start because remember 24 percent of the bean has cocoa butter in it i need at least 28 percent or higher to make chocolate so i gotta press those beans and make cocoa butter over here i'm stuck with all this powder i sell the powder to the baking industry to make all their cookies with. They love it. Cakes. They love that. And then we take the cocoa butter, extra cocoa butter, and we make chocolate bars. Remember, 1842, Cadbury started making chocolate bars because they were able to get extra cocoa butter and figured out how to put it together. So they made a dark, they were making dark chocolate bars. They were the first to do this. But it's a, it's a, it's a love-hate relationship with the cocoa people, uh, powder people, and the chocolate people. Sometimes you have too much cocoa powder, it's cheap. Sometimes you have too much cocoa butter, it's cheap. So it's, it's back and forth in the industry as to who needs what. If the baking industry goes south, you know, cocoa butter goes very expensive. Right now, it's expensive. You know, it usually, usually about three times the, the, the cost of a chocolate bar is in the cocoa butter. So I'm just going to leave this because I'm not going to do any clusters and stuff right now because we're going to concentrate on molding things today and how that process works, okay? So I'm just going to stick this